Which one is more dangerous, an exploding volcano or a lake? Simple answer, right? You take your chances with the lake, but what if the lake was also exploding? This isn't an outlandish hypothetical in the Democratic Republic of Congo right now. It's a realistic possibility that has put authorities on high alert. Here's what you need to know. After an eruption at the Democratic Republic of Congo's Mount Nyiragongo volcano, there are fears that a limnic eruption could occur at a nearby lake, spewing out suffocating gas, according to Reuters. The specific concern is that carbon dioxide trapped at the bottom of Lake Kivu could erupt out and be carried toward the nearby cities of Goma in the Democratic Republic of Congo and Gisenyi in Rwanda, endangering more than 690,000 lives, according to the AFP. Nyiragongo, a nearly 3,500-meter or 11,500-foot-high stratovolcano that sits atop the East African Rift Tectonic Divide, erupted on Saturday, releasing two rivers of lava that took 32 lives and left around 20,000 people without homes. In the wake of that eruption, the Goma Volcano Observatory, cited by AFP, has warned that Nyiragongo could erupt again and lava from it could reach Lake Kivu. If there was also an earthquake beneath the bottom of the lake, or if magma erupted into it from below, pressure changes in the water could release some of the 300 cubic kilometers of carbon dioxide contained within the lake, according to the science journal Nature. Should this happen, thousands of people around Lake Kivu could be asphyxiated, according to a warning by the Goma Volcano Observatory. According to the publication Nature, in a previous limnic eruption incident in 1986, Lake Nios in Cameroon released less than one cubic kilometer of carbon dioxide but asphyxiated more than 1,700 people. Thousands of animals were also killed in the incident, as George Kling, a biogeochemist from the University of Michigan in Ann Arbor, who visited the scene following the eruption, described. The animals were all dead, thousands of cattle just lying about, he said. The danger was exacerbated by the fact that the carbon dioxide was denser than the air, meaning it stayed close to the ground as it spread up to 26 kilometers from the lake. Of course, there is more than one way for volcanic activity to affect water. A deadly tsunami struck coastal towns on the islands of Sumatra and Java, Indonesia, on Saturday. The tsunami was caused by an eruption from Anak Krakatau, a volcanic island that sits in the Pacific Ring of Fire in the Sunda Strait. According to Reuters, the eruption caused a 64-hectare portion of the volcano to collapse into the ocean, triggering an underwater landslide that would set off the tsunami. No warning system was triggered at the time of the tsunami. Indonesian officials stated that their tsunami buoy network has not been operational since 2012. According to The Guardian, if a buoy network had been installed around Anak Krakatau, it would have given surrounding towns a maximum of one to two minute warnings ahead of pending waves. The tsunami demolished over 700 buildings and left hundreds dead or missing just 24 hours after the volcanic landslide. Anak Krakatau is one of the 76 active volcanoes in Indonesia. The Lake Berryessa Reservoir in Northern California is said to reach full capacity for the first time in 11 years. If that happens, water will begin flowing into the lake's glory hole spillway like a giant bathtub drain. Crowds of tourists are expected to flock to the area to see the unusual sight. The Glory Hole Spillway is located about 200 feet from the Monticello Dam. The distance from the Glory Hole to its exit point located in the Puta Creek is about 700 feet. The Glory Hole is a morning glory type spillway. Shaped like a funnel, it is 72 feet in diameter at its lip and narrows to about 28 feet at its exit. Water starts spilling into the glory hole when the lake fills up to a level of 1,602,000 acre feet. The glory hole can release a maximum of 362,000 gallons of water per second. Water is expected to begin pouring into the glory hole this Saturday, as heavy rain is predicted in the coming days. The last time this happened was in 2006. The sudden eruption of New Zealand's White Island volcano has led to death and destruction in the popular tourist spot. According to the University of Otago, White Island straddles the Australian and Pacific tectonic plates. Magma is created beneath the island when the Pacific plate pushes against the Australian plate and sinks beneath it. The Guardian reports that White Island magma is shallow and heats groundwater to form pockets of extremely hot steam. This causes high pressure in surrounding rocks. The expansion of water into steam can be supersonic, and its energy can shatter the rock bed resulting in steam-driven eruption, also known as hydrothermal eruption. According to The Guardian, 
When this happens, the resulting vapor can become 1,700 times its original size and create devastating impacts. The Guardian reports that White Island's steam-driven eruption blasted hot volcanic rocks, ash and coarse particles that can inflict impact trauma, burns and respiratory injuries. Authorities fear as many as 13 people could be dead. CNN reports that five tourists on the island have been killed, while 27 have suffered serious burns and eight are still missing as of Tuesday. The Guardian reports that steam-driven eruptions can happen quickly and without warning because their triggers are not well understood. Volcanologists at GeoNet say the White Island volcano erupted with enough force that its plumes rose to a height of three kilometers. With volcanic activity in mind, the State of Hawaii's Emergency Management Agency has a list of items you should include in a go bag should residents find themselves in an emergency situation. Some of the items on the list include changes of clothes and sturdy shoes, a portable battery or crank-powered radio, a copy of prescriptions, non-perishable foods like energy bars, beef jerky, and nuts, and a whistle. The good thing about that list is that even if nothing bad ever happens, they've got the makings of a great weekend in there. The bad thing is that if a new report on Hawaii's giant Moana Loa volcano is correct, the penetrating shrieks of those whistles could be lighting up residents' earlobes any day now. Here's what you need to know. New data has revealed more about what might set off eruptions at the world's largest volcano. In a study published in Nature Scientific Reports, researchers at the Rosenthal School of Marine and Atmospheric Science at the University of Miami modeled movements inside the Mauna Loa volcano in Hawaii, which, according to the U.S. Geological Survey website, has a summit of 17 kilometers or 56,000 feet above its below seafloor base. The researchers found that while there was recent movement along a fault under the eastern flank, relatively little movement was detected under the western flank. They concluded that an earthquake under the western flank is due. Alongside this, the researchers found that between 2014 and 2020, 0.11 cubic kilometers of new magma pushed its way into a dike-like magma body beneath the south of the volcano's summit. Given this magma influx, an earthquake of magnitude 6 or greater could cause an eruption, according to lead author of the study, Bhuvan Varugu. The last time Mauna Loa erupted in 1984, lava got within 10 kilometers, or 6 miles, of the outskirts of the city of Hilo, according to Encyclopedia Britannica, though it took weeks to do so. Evidence of smaller-scale seismic activity has already been found in recent weeks. Last week, the Hawaii Volcano Observatory recorded approximately 113 small magnitude earthquakes below Mauna Loa, mostly concentrated below the summit and upper elevation flanks of the volcano. However, the U.S. Geological Survey clarified in a statement on its website that while rates of deformation and seismicity at the summit remain slightly above long-term levels, the Mauna Loa volcano is not currently erupting. I don't know about you, but when someone tells me a volcano isn't currently erupting, I don't feel that reassured. It's like someone coming up to you and telling you a ton of bricks isn't about to fall on your head. It's better than them saying they are going to fall on you, but you do have to wonder why they've brought it up. U.S. Army engineers discovered a vortex earlier this month that they say is causing water levels in one of the country's largest reservoirs to drop. This footage, captured by the Tulsa Division of the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers, shows the vortex swirling in a fashion similar to that of a tornado. The vortex was discovered in Lake Texoma, which sits on the border between Oklahoma and Texas. U.S. Army engineers say the vortex measures 2.4 meters in diameter. When you fill a bathtub and then pull the plug, the drainage creates a vortex. Similarly, when Lake Texoma's floodgates were opened to let out water, this vortex appeared. U.S. Army engineers say the vortex is large enough to suck in a full-sized boat. The engineers explained that this is a normal occurrence when water is released from floodgates. However, Business Insider reports that the area is off limits and that engineers have marked the area with safety buoys and caution signs to keep people away. For more news animations and explainers, hit the subscribe and bell button to join the Tomo News family. Thanks for watching.